Hello everyone. Please don't think that the thumbnail of this video is clickbait, because did you know that we can technically transfer details consisting of millions of polygons to a mesh made of just one polygon? The trim sheet texture creation method, which is frequently used in game projects, actually covers this exact process. In this video, I'll talk about the 3D baking process and the key points to consider when baking game assets. What is baking? The baking process refers to transferring the details of high polygon 3D models used in the game and film industry to lower polygon models. In short, it is a process that makes polygons that don't actually exist appear as if they do. Why is the baking process performed? High polygon models created to achieve detailed visuals can cause issues, especially in animated character models, as they require significant processing power and memory in 3D scenes. To minimize these issues and increase optimization, baked models are especially used in game and animation projects. What happens during the baking process? By creating channels such as normal map, displacement map, ambient occlusion, thickness, ID map, curvature, and position, the aim is to achieve detailed visuals on low polygon models. How do programs perform baking? Today's polygon technology consists of vertices, edges, and faces. Each surface has a normal direction that determines its front and back. Programs with baking tools such as Blender or Substance Painter send rays at certain distances between the surfaces to calculate the normal directions of high polygon surfaces, the dense or sparse areas of polygons, and the hollow or raised parts of the model. The results are then transferred to a 2D UV map. The keyword here is the term normal. What are the important points in the baking process? Topology of the low polygon model, UV map, distances between high poly and low poly surfaces, the similarity of the distances between the surfaces of the low polygon model and the high polygon model to which the model details will be transferred reduces the problems you will encounter in the bake process. Secondly, the similarity of the forms of low polygon surfaces and high polygon surfaces also gives better results on surfaces in cylindrical forms. For this reason, 3D artists carefully work on high polygon models in the topology creation process. When creating your UV maps, you should be careful not to have stretch problems on the surfaces. Secondly, if you leave as little empty space as possible in your UV atlas, you can fit more pixels into your UV map. Don't forget, the more space your model's UV part takes up in the atlas, the more detail you can create. While creating the low polygon topology of the model, some surfaces remain inside and some surfaces remain outside of the high polygon areas. The high polygon areas under the low polygon are the rear distance for us, and the high polygon areas outside the low polygon are the frontal distances for us. Keeping the rear and frontal distances balanced throughout the low poly model will always provide us with an advantage. These distances that I mentioned in Substance Painter are controlled with the maximum frontal distance and maximum rear distance parameters. If the distances between low poly surfaces and high poly surfaces are balanced, you can perform bake operations without any problems, even with high distance parameters in Substance Painter. Finally, I want to tell you about the ID mesh and color ID method, which I often prefer to use in texturing processes. If you make your high polygon models in separate pieces, you can create ID maps in different colors using separate meshes in Substance Painter. You can also use the ID map that will be created during the bake process to easily mask your model while coloring it. The only thing you need to do for this is to select the color source for the id map of the Substance Painter as Mesh ID before baking. After creating the color ID map, adding a mask to your layer and then selecting a color selection tool for that mask will provide you with an easy masking process. As a final process, I convert the standard shader used by Substance Painter to a shader with an alpha channel from the shader settings menu. Then I add the opacity channel for all scene objects from the texture set settings menu. Then I add a new fill layer for the model and activate only the opacity channel of the layer. 
With this layer, we create a complete illusion by hiding the edges of the model. As you can see at this stage, we can bake the high polygon models, which are in pieces, to the plane object consisting of only two triangles, and we can also mask them easily. So far, I have tried to explain the bake processes that I prefer when using Substance Painter. In the rest of the video, I will include the topology, bake and coloring processes for normal use of the model in the video from the beginning in time lapse. Thanks for watching. Thank you.